There's something that just keeps ringing, and I, I know in the song that Brother Ronnie sang tonight, uh, God can move the, the stone away and roll the stone away. There's a portion in there where it mentions the word focus. Focus. I don't know what verse that was, or if that was in the chorus or what it was, but there was a word. Maybe it wasn't in that song. Maybe that is <laughs> so I keep hearing that in my spirit constantly. Focus, focus, focus. Amen. God's got a purpose and a plan. And I'll tell you what, we, we need to just probably stop right now and pray for Brother Billy, wherever he's at, yes. and his wife. Yep. Uh, but there's a purpose and a reason that he's not here. That's tonight. right. That's true. Boy, we heard some good testimony yes, that has come out of that. And Father, we certainly lift them up to you. You know where they're at. <laughs> you know what they're Amen. Doing. And so, Father, we leave that in your hands. Yes. 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 Have your way. Yes. Have your way. But I want you to carry something practical away tonight. I'm just a practical person. Simple. I know Wanda and I was sitting here one Sunday, and and uh, as we got up to leave, she said, "We we we look at people. We look at everybody, and and we." We try to hear what the what God is saying and speaking through. Uh, we want to see people through His eyes. And the one thing that we saw about Brother Raymond was he's got a gentle spirit. Yes. And I thought when she said that, yeah, I bet it wasn't always gentle. Well. <laughs> and so we heard his testimony. But you know, mine wasn't always gentle either. Uh, it, there was a, it was a, a tough egg to crack. And uh, but God knows just exactly. He knows how to, how to do it. He knows how to split it apart without bothering anything on the inside. He'll he'll rearrange <laughs> things and take it. But the thing I want, the practical thing I want to leave with you tonight, if you're around me a little bit at all, you're going to hear this over and oh. over. You'll get sick of hearing it. But I'll tell you what, if you will really hear it, the problem is the world they're listening, but they're not hearing. You've got to say things over and over and over. I've been telling my boss for two years that we've got a die that needs bearings in. We keep putting seals in it, $220 a pop. I said, we, we need to get bearings in this thing, and we're going to have to keep putting seals in it. It's going to catch us in a bind. We're going to have a bunch of orders come in, After all and it's going to be broke down. And guess what? We sent it out yesterday, <laughs> right when we need it. Let's go. And I said, I told you so. I hate to say I told you so. I hate to say it, but I told you so. <laughs> it has to go. But if people would just hear what you're saying. Yes. So I want you to hear this tonight. Before the need ever arises in your life, I don't care what it is, spiritual, financial, family, whatever, provision is already there. Amen. Uh, Amen. I'm going to give you a quick little testimony about wow. that. And, and that is true. What, can you prove it scripturally? Listen, we could start in Genesis and go to Revelation. Amen. Yeah. And you Amen. can stop me anywhere where you get tired of listening. Because it started with Abraham. It started with Adam and Eve. God made the earth before he put man on it. And our earth was man's provision for everything that he would ever need. Right. He did that first. He didn't make Adam and Eve and then say, well, let's see, what would y'all like to have? No, God all had it all ready for him. In Abraham's life, when he took Isaac up to sacrifice on the mountain, he, had he had a ram in the bush waiting. God always has provision before that need arises. My daughter uh, has got a Pontiac that I uh, helped her get three years ago. And four years ago, I was in a man's house. I, he, he was disabled and uh, a good friend of ours. And so I was helping him get some new appliances in, not new appliances, refurbished, because I would get them and, and rebuild them. And as I would get one, I'd take it over. And so when I was hooking up his washer, he told me, he said, Roy, get whatever you want out of that toolbox that i got to get rid of everything. I can't use any of those tools anymore anyhow. Well, there, I, I told him, I said, look, Bob, I don't need anything. i got more tools now than i got enough sense to use. And he went over and he just started throwing little things at me and he tossed a small package of clamps, hose clamps, little bitty hose clamps for a gas line. Well, I figured, well, maybe I'll use those one day. So I just tossed them in and told him to stop. I tossed them in my toolbox four years ago. Yesterday, uh, my daughter had, we bought that Pontiac and that Pontiac with the sunroof's got a problem. Over a period of time, the hoses coming off the sunroof that drained the rain out 
shrink, pull out of the openings, and then you get water in your car every time it rains. That's on every Pontiac with a sunroof. You're going to face that problem. And so I went in, I pulled all the headliner down, and when you pull the headliner down, there's those two hoses, one on each side, pulled right out. Well, then I had come all the way to town to get a filter that I got the wrong kind of filter for and changed her all, got back, and when I pulled it down, and then I thought, why didn't I get some clamps while I was in town? But then I remembered what I always preach. <laughs> Provision is there to be able to do rises. Somewhere amongst all this junk I've got, the provision is there. And I, I started going through every toolbox that I had, and I got down and I pulled this one drawer out, and there's that package of four little clamps four years ago that a man tossed to me, and I said, I'll probably never use, but I'll throw them in my toolbox anyhow. Just the right size for those hose clamps. Now, I could tell you story after story after story because when God first showed me that, I put that into my life in every situation. And it didn't make any difference if it was a cup of coffee. Provision is there before the need arises. <laughs> Everything. And listen, if you'll grab a hold of what that really says, you'll begin to read the Bible. You'll begin to see provision after provision after provision mm -hmm. yes. where people met the need or came up to My the God. need. Yes. And God has already been there. Uh -huh. And he said, Brother Raymond's going to come to this point on this date. And there's, his, there's what's going to happen. He's going to run up against this problem. I've got, I'll, I'll go ahead and meet this need now so that when you get there, Brother Raymond, the provision's already Hallelujah. there. Hallelujah. What you need, what it'll do is change your prayer life immensely. Yes. You're not begging God anymore. God's already been here and He's already provided. <laughs> Hallelujah. All I got to do is say, Lord, open my eyes to the provision. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.